Aloha, my name is Tammy Moniz with Faith Surf School at the beautiful Outrigger Waikiki Beach Resorts. Together, we bring you Surfers in Residence with our special guest and newly crowned world champion, Kai Salas. Kai, I'm so excited to have you today. Yeah, thank you. I'm stoked to be here. I'm so stoked. I, I mean, I, we surf together. I get a little coaching tips from the master here. But um, I'm excited to hear your story, your back end story, because like I know you, but I don't know a lot about you. And I'm really excited for this time to get to know you. And I'm excited for you guys to get to know Kai as well. Anyways, so let's start. You know, um, I would like to start from your beginnings. You're growing up here. I hear that you have so much history here, you know. And so they ask, tell me about it. Yeah, it's funny. I actually um, grew up on the beach right downstairs. My dad was um, a beach boy. He worked at the stand literally right there with uh, Dee Dee and Uncle Blue and all those like old school beach boys. So I started I learned how to surf from him and literally right out front here at Canoes, I learned on the big heavy rental boards when I was like 10. So, um, yeah. Wow. It's funny, we're right here. Yeah. Do you have any kind of story of the Beach Boys back then or in the water and how they would be in the, to you in the water or any kind of story? When I was learning, I would... The only influence I had were like the older Beach Boys, just watching them surf and then... Every once in a while, when I got older, like Russ K and Dino and like, you know, those older guys would come and surf Queens and I would watch that. Like I wouldn't watch any surf videos. I never seen anybody shortboard before. Um, everyone in Waikiki longboarded, which is kind of why I got into longboarding. Wow, that's awesome. Well, in Waikiki, this is a special place for us because um, we... The history of our ancestors in the past are have also have a roots here. Do you want to kind of share a little bit? Yeah, you know, you hear all the stories of Duke and um, how he was basically, you know, not only an Olympic athlete and like godfather of surfing, but he also taught people how to surf and and he was the you know lived that beach boy lifestyle, which kind of like. I consider myself like a um, late generation of that. So yeah, it's kind of, it's this is a special beach just thinking back to, you know, those guys back then when what they used to do. And then, I mean, we've been surfing, um, you know, this beach together for many years. Um, back in the days when you started professional surfing, um, tell us what that was like back then, you know, when you started compared to how did it evo evolve to this yeah, so the longboard, um, the professional longboard tour or circuit um, has has changed. When I first started, it was <clears throat> very progressive. That was the style of surfing that everybody did. Um, I started in the early 90s, so, you know, guys were doing progressive maneuvers off the tail mostly, like 360s and helicopters and big turns, and in the past, like, five to eight years they slowly transitioned into more of a like like traditional style of longboarding so that was the biggest change um throughout my my years my experience and you had to make those changes because you were one of those noted to be a power surfer you know with those special maneuvers you know how did that change yeah, so during that transition where the criteria changed from progressive to traditional, it was either like you quit competing and you um, just keep surfing the way you're surfing, and which a lot of people did. A lot of guys that competed on tour for a long time, when that when that change came along, they, they stopped competing. But I, I just um, took it as a new challenge, and I actually ended up preferring to surf that way most of the time now and I always dabbled with riding single fins and I was always a fan of like Joel Tudor growing up and watching him surf and I admired how s smooth and uh, nice it looked so because I kind of dabbled with it in the past when that came along I was like thinking to myself like I could do this I just gotta put in the time and um, I was building boards so I gotta build the right boards and just 
it just took a few years to kind of learn a new way, but it wasn't, it wasn't too hard. And yeah, it ended up, it ended up being better. I, I feel. Yeah. That's what I, I feel like your surfing, um, has been a part of the progression of like how, um, it was and you evolved and helped it evolve to bringing that style and finesse and that grace and the power um, with that classic surfing that we see today. So it's like, it's, it's beautiful that to, to watch you grow and not let it hinder your surfing, but um, you, you took it and you, and you progressed surfing along with it. Thank you. Yeah. Super stoked. Super awesome. Well, um, we talked about building boards. Like that was kind of a, um, I don't know, to me, it was a surprise. Like, what is he doing building boards? You're shaping it? Like, you know, so your influence was Uncle Donald, right? Before you want to share that and then how you evolved from there? I used to ride Donald Takeyama surfboards for maybe 15 years. Through most of my competitive career, I rode for Donald Takeyama. And in that time, I would go visit him in Oceanside and I'd go to his factory and he'd be shaping in the back room and he'd have all the beautiful boards in his shop. And for me, it was like like a kid in the candy store, you know, it was just going to like Willy Wonka's chocolate factory. It was amazing. And I, I never forget like the things, you know, we were working on with board design and, and things he taught me, why boards do, do this or why boards do that. And, you know, shaping boards was something I just always wanted to do since, since that, since I watched him do it. And I've always, thought of myself to be good with my hands. And, um, you know, when I was a teenager, I used to fix boards as a side job to make money. And then I started to shape a little bit, shoot, long time ago, I don't know, maybe 15 years ago, I'd break boards at pipe and then I'd strip the glass and then just with hand tools, shape a little fish or something. And then I recently... There, there, be, there came a time where Donald passed away and then I was getting boards from his ghost shaper, Tommy Moss, and then he retired. And then it was like, it just kind of hit me like now would be a perfect time to really um, start shaping full on. And then the pandemic hit and then I closed my surf school down, which I been running for almost 15 years. So I had a year or two to like just reset and I was in the shaping room um, almost every day just teaching myself how to shape and glassing the boards and then taking them out and testing them and then figuring out what was wrong. So that, so when, you know, COVID hit, it was a perfect place to be because I was in the room all day with a mask and all by myself secluded, just shaping boards and, um, Luckily in Hawaii, we could surf. They didn't close the, they closed the beaches, but not the, you could still surf, right? So I was surfing and shaping and surfing and shaping for like two years straight. I built hundreds of boards and then I was like, you know, I just figured it out and they ended up working really good. Wow. That's amazing. All right. Well, COVID has been a hard part for Hawaii and our businesses, but then it has also turned into some blessings here for you, hasn't it? Hasn't it? Yeah. So, so special. You have all these different models and uh, we've talked about models because I'm like, which one should I ride? You know, but why don't you give us, um, I love the names of each. And so like, why don't you give us like um, a little brief? So I got, I don't know. I don't even know how many models I got. It's just like, I kind of just make whatever I'm in the mood for. Like if I'll be surfing one day and I want a board to nose ride, better with more lift or turn faster I'll I'll just go and try to design something that um I think would work that way and once I kind of feel like oh this is it this is doing exactly what I want it to do I'll go and like title it with a name and keep that as a model um so some I just I'll, I'll just keep doing that because it's fun to do. And um, yeah, I probably got like 10 or 10 or so models that um, 
I got right now. And with those models, you've um, you have a really solid crew, a team of kids, which has been super fun for me to watch because, you know, before you were you surfed and more like it was, you know, it's an individual sport, right? You're out there and you want to win and you were on the top of um, surfing um, back then. And then this happened. And then all of a sudden you're starting to build a team. You want to tell us about your team? Yeah. So when I started to make boards, I got a really good board deal with this brand called Thunderbolt, um, where they would kind of mass, they would produce my models and they had a huge distribution around the world. And I was watching like Connie and Kelis and some of the kids in Waikiki who didn't have that great of a board sponsor and they were stuck on the same board and I saw their surfing progress but their their boards weren't keeping up and I was like hey I called them and I'm like guys I could you know uh make you whatever you want I know exactly how you surf and I think it would really help your surfing I was clever enough to figure out a way to pay them also um because what they for and if they're riding anyone anyone's boards people are going to notice and it's going to result in board sales so they should benefit from that so it turned out um that i was able to sponsor them and make them boards that are working for them they're winning contests so i'm stoked to see them win contests but even i surf a lot with them here right here in waikiki and a lot of times just paddling back out watching connie or Achilles do something great on the on my boards is is as rewarding as um as anything you know so, yeah, it's been really fun. Yeah, it's like a, you're an artist and they're like allowing to display your art and your piece, yeah, with such elegance and beauty. I mean, it's beautiful to watch them grow up on this beach too, right? And surf alongside of them when they were little. And then now you're, you have, you guys have formed such a beautiful community together and where you're traveling together. You guys, I mean, come, I watch the clips when you guys leave and, follow all that and it's just so cool to see this community of Waikiki you know people um together and encouraging each other pushing each other having fun but yet you you came up against them too right at different times how's that yeah so this year we 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 all traveled together when we went to the U.S. Open was the first event we stayed in a little Airbnb down the road and it was really fun free surfing and we were eat, eating together in the same house. And then Connie and Kelis ended up winning that event. So it was really, really cool. We were all happy. And then we went to Bell's and same thing. We, we all stayed in the same house and then I ended up winning that. And then we went to El Salvador and then we were all staying in the same hotel. <clears throat> um, and then Connie ended up winning that. Kelis got second and then we ended up going to Malibu where we, again we all stayed in the same hotel and um so you know I I ended up winning that one Connie got second Kelis got s second so they both finished second in the world and I ended up the world champ so we all did amazing which you know is great to see because I know my boards are working the thing I take away from that was the this was the best year I had on tour competing just because we had so much fun staying together. And, um, you know, my family was there in Malibu and my daughter Coral was there for most of the contest. So, it was, yeah, it was super memorable. You, so what do you think? Like, you know, a lot of times you think that that could be a hindrance, right, to have all this fun. You know, we're, we're there to win, right? But how does that add? How did that add to your life? This year and last year, I, I've kind of... I'm getting older, so I'm kind of just realizing I'm not taking it super serious. So, like, I bring my family, and I'm, I am taking it serious, like, in preparation, where I'm training and making sure I'm on, I'm on the right boards and studying when I'm there, because I don't want to go there for nothing. But I've learned to kind of, like, let go of, like, all the pressure, you know? That's really special. Yeah. That's not easy to do, right? That takes a lifetime to figure it out so you won and we watched that and it was so amazing to to watch all this happen and cheer each on and to the finals and you were up against your team rider and your very good dear friend Kaniella and to win that 
what were you from from the beginning to that what was there any kind of mantra or something that you were telling yourself throughout not not really of course like the same the usual like going into a contest you know just the usual routine but yeah going into the final with connie was almost like we surf together almost all the time you know like we'll we'll surf queens for hours together and it's almost like we push each other you know i'll paddle back out and see him do i don't know incredible nose ride or something and then you want to also do better so it was almost like that in the in the heats together you know it was nothing nothing i wasn't used to surfing with him so it's almost like one of those free surfs but it was for a world title so it was kind of it was cool, you know, it wasn't anything I wasn't used to surfing against him, but, you know, and we've had contests throughout the year and, and you know. That's super cool. I mean, um, so you're on the podium and like a bunch of the Waikiki kids too, right, that um, surf here, that you that you watch grow up and you help out too. Like, how was that being all together in, like, how were they like fifth or what they like, um Kiani and Johnny, right? Like a bunch of the Waikiki kids. Johnny and Kiani weren't in the final eight for Malibu, but they, they all had like really incredible performances, which, you know, I was proud to see them, you know, do that. Like Johnny made the final against Connie in El Salvador. And that was really cool because I was watching those two like, you know, surf out there when they were basically, I don't know, little kids you know 11 12 years old so to see them in the final together was was really cool and Keani had some really good performances through the year you know especially being her first year on tour she did she did great and Sophia you know she won an event and I think she finished third in the world so you know if you look at if you look at Waikiki as a whole on that tour like Man, we're we're a Waikiki storm. That's right. <laughs> That's right. And it's like when you guys win, you when you win, we feel like we win. You know, like Hawaii wins, but we win as people of Waikiki. You know, with sure. so much pride in our culture here and our lifestyle here and our families and everything. So it it's just like we all win. All of our family are just like yeah, you know. So amazing. Okay, so we're gonna um as we're just gonna end here but I think one of the most important things is your family the success of you as a man as a husband a business owner a father has a lot also to do with you know family um what has your kids or wife have have they coached you in anything or have they said you know anything that you kind of keep in mind one thing that my family helped with my competing is you know, my my daughters are both kind of getting good at surfing. And I for me, I feel like being a surfer is the the best life lifestyle I could have ever wished for. And I wanna um pass that down to my kids. So, you know, a lot of these contests having my my two daughters there, um, I just wanted to go out there and inspire them. So that's why like, you know, I I just wanted to give it my all this year and put a lot of effort in hopes to show them this is what you could do one day. And uh, and that and that goes for all the kids that grew up from Hawaii. You know, I want to inspire them to show them like, you know, this you could do this one day. Awesome, you are an inspiration, Kai. And um, if if there's three important things that you would want to tell your children, um. Uh, or or even the the kids kids here. What would what maybe three things you would wanna share with them? You know, no, number one is just never let yourself get caught up in like drugs or alcohol. You know, because that'll just make life hard. Hard life's hard enough as it is. So you wanna stay away from that. And then, you know, second thing is just whatever you wanna be. Just you know try your hardest at it and follow your dreams and never give up. And yeah, the, I don't know. Top two. Those two are That's good, awesome. good enough, I think. That is so good. <laughs> well, gosh, we thank you so much, Kai, from the Outrigger Waikiki. 
and myself as your friend, as um, your student, and hopefully I can make you proud one day by getting on the nose. But thank you for joining us and for sharing your life. And I hope that you guys at home and the viewers will be able to get a little bit more familiar with our 2023 Longboard Men's World Champion.